We unite for one thing, black people now live good. Mm. You understand? And one thing that we know the whole that we can unite for. You can come from Jamaica and come from wherever. Eh -eh. We all now watch that. You might be um, a nationalist, you might be a Muslim, you might be a Christian, wherever you come from, we all suffer. If we can't unite for the, the, the social ills, we all suffer. They all can't unite for. You know, so see if we can put the, the, the things that we, we disagree on to one side and just unite for that and then build local organizing committees set foot proposals that we can now even monitor you understand our progress that's what we're looking for come out of the millions more movement so this is to draw attention i want to get attention get people in so we can give direction to the black community that's what this thing is about so that's what you will get when you're coming <laughs> it comes really the black all right yeah. that's uh that, that was a brilliant answer so tell the people when and where it's taking place again because i feel say that they deal with everything that they needed to um, deal with and that's one thing and next thing because uh, you know i've said about this unity thing yeah and i was gonna you're lucky that you brought that up a little piece later because i'm gonna say to you because you, you dropped it in the other direction first you dropped it with yeah we need unity so that we can have a purpose but then in your speech you're lucky you know because i'm about to rinse you but uh, yeah. so I tell the people where it's where it's, where it's yeah, coming yeah, yeah. Thing. Alright, yeah man, see, I'm a virgin that's still there, so them man they have my back more time, you know. Trust me, can't really, you yeah, know, we watch a boy that's in the world long in the black, I've been watching more time, you know, so the boy love going through, you know. Yeah, this movie million, 24th of September, that's tomorrow, taking place at 3 to 5 Hinton Road in Brixton. Um, as I say, that's Mohammed's Mosque, the Nation of Islam Mosque in Brixton. I watch nothing still, then I will try to turn in a Muslim or nothing, just reach down this thing, you know what I mean? That, you know, I don't want to think, I want to try to indoctrinate you, I know, a lot of that, you know what I mean? You know, you can't go with a friend, you want people, then. Eh? <laughs> but if you tell us, say, there's 50 cents down there on God, no. Why you not watch that and you know? Talk, you know, they really need to do for the lawyer. You know, they know what's going to happen to you, really. You're going to get a lawyer down there. You're going to close the doors. You're going to shave up his head. Shave up that afro. Shave up that beard. And next week, you know, next week, people in an argument. You're going to get a lawyer. Salam alaikum, I'm going to get a lawyer. <laughs> With a fear. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't watch that still, don't watch that. I don't really know. I don't really know. That's a treat of fire. Hinton Road, information about that telephone 07862 214485. That's 07862 214485 or 0207 509800. Doors open from 6 o'clock. Program start from 6.30. Donation a mere 5 pounds. And trust me. Every penny from that is going back to pay for the event and put towards um, formulating foundation and formulating panels right here in the UK to improve the condition of black people. Trust me. Alright, you know, I know the um, lawyer wants to come in and of course we've got to kind of get my man Paulie in from exposure and yeah. hearing alienation, we've got to get them back in. Now, I don't know whether uh, the blind alphabet, so we're going to jump in at this point in discussion and of course, without you, the listeners, the people, because we're going to go live with just like my man, as my man lawyer calls it, the argument. So if you want to jump in 07908568581, because the point of argument I want to throw out is that some people would always say, but boy, it's, it's, it's a Farrakhan thing. But why is it we've always got to follow some leaders from America all the time? Where's the leadership here? Is there any leadership in the UK? Is there a need for black leadership in the UK? Or is it just about always following America? Are we just following black people in America? Are we just following African-American programs and copying? But we can't come up with nothing original for ourselves here. Alright, well, point blank, really and truly, <coughs> the way I check it is that, well, then, boy, the first place leadership start is within. You understand? So if you hear a message, regardless of where it comes from, since we had a while ago, Regardless of where the message comes from, it's positive and you can use it and adapt it to your own condition right here, then you lose it. You understand? And then you can develop. The first thing the Honorable Elijah would say you must be trying to do is develop the leader within. You understand? That is, the, in every individual, you take a leadership role within your own life. That means that you don't make things affect you. You bring things into existence. You don't have um, things people are planned for you, you make plans for yourself. So once you start taking a leadership role within your life, then you start to get a leadership role within your family. You take a leadership role in your family, you start to get a leadership role within your community. You understand? And then you know, people will gravitate towards the leadership, the, the direction that you have. And wherever you can find 
that leadership or the first message regarding your leadership coming from. If you come from Jamaica and you follow it, nothing wrong with it. Adapt it to your condition right here. You don't, you know, you, you should not um, disconnect yourself from any source of leadership or any source of guidance. That's like somebody, like me personally, me read the Quran now, I'm not going to read the Bible. No, whatever right guidance exists, you read it and accept it. You understand? So what? If Jesus never come from Jamaica, so we never read, never read, never read Jesus' word then. You understand? Jesus don't know a part name Jamaica, so what may I read Bible for? You understand? If you are going to limit yourself by geographical borders and all that kind of thing, then Bridget, we are read, if you come from, as I said, you come from Bangladesh, and we are, we, we say you are Muslim for, because the Prophet Muhammad is peace, but never, never got Bangladesh. You understand? So we got to, you can't limit yourself by borders, geographical borders, you cannot do that. Anyway, right guidance exists, you accept it in your life and adapt it towards your condition right here in the UK. Some seat still, you know? Okay, thanks for the, um, by the way, Preach, thanks man. for that, man. All right, London, it's the argument 07 And first and foremost, I'd like to say special thanks to the brother Hakeem for holding it up while I had to go and deal with some business and thing like that. I want to say special thanks to my guests, to, to the guests there in the blind alphabets. You know what, I was driving back from where I was coming from, I was listening to what was going on, it was, it was yeah man, yeah man, we love them thing there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love them man with battle scars, you know what I mean? I give them man a set, you know what I mean? <laughs> so boy, one of my next events, definitely going to see the blind alphabets represented. Hey, you know man, you got to come for 10% man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, manager, manager. And, and, and Haki wants his cut from you, look, you know what I mean? Hey, no, no, you, 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 the management takes the cut from the artist, <laughs> not from the promoter. <laughs> so, boy. Hype man, hype man, I mean, uh, Hakeem, you have to lay down some dance see, moves, man. See, this, this is the part of organization that the black people need. They need to understand how business works and things like that. Uh, the artist, business, the, the artist, that's, that's, business. The, that's that old business work stuff. That's why, that's why you're there to start promote events and things like that. But don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you just keep on that, uh, things going, I mean. <laughs> don't worry, man. It's, it's a good, it's a million more movement. You have a move still from your position where you are standing right now. Alright. So, you know what? I have to say love to everybody in the studio, man, because, you know what? I was just worried that, you know, when I come say it's just going to be like, real yeah. shabby and like, <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, but it's been tight. <laughs> I mean, it's been probably better than when I did. I mean, I so, I'm not quite mad. The number is 07908 568581. And we've been addressing a situation for the last two weeks. Is it last two weeks? Well, um, <laughs> right? we've been addressing a situation of parenting that I would like to come back to. I mean, the car. It's been great having you guys here and it's telling the fuel free to stay and take part in the argument right now. I don't know if, how many men or if any man in here has got children, but I know you all were children at some point. So, you know what I mean? And probably hope to have children at some point, unless you had a nasty accident. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so <laughs> cool but, for you, uh, man. <laughs> but, One right now, we're, we're going to be talking about, you know, um, parenting. Well, that's what Paulie was calling it, you know, parenting, but realistically, this came about about a situation of black man just getting sick all the time, that we don't look after our children, that, that, that we're not there for our children, that the kids are unruly because the black man needs to step up and take care of the situation and be mentors to their children and rah, 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 and the women is doing everything and blah, blah. And most of the time what I find is the women that have either kick out the man or the relationship has broke up and the women is carrying on off key. Like don't want to let the man see the children, don't want to, you know, and this, this is how the argument actually started and this is where we're coming from in the first place, you know what I mean? And so Paulie decided to set up this fly and call it parenting and since that day we began parenting, parenting, right? Even to the point of Dungeon Master last week coming on and talking some apologizing to black black women is like bro apologize to your woman man <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't me you know what I mean? wasn't right? 
So right now, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. We're gonna, know what I mean, we're going to, we're going to like address the situation. We're gonna balance it. Know what I mean, so it, it's it's not a woman bashing thing that we're on, but we just wanna highlight the fact that a lot of this um, so-called black fathers not dealing with the matter properly. Properly, is that the ladies are not dealing with the matter properly. Now I mean, and accordingly, and letting their emotions overtake the sense. Now I mean, so on that tip, we started this argument talking from the point of view of going to court that a man is actually fighting for custody of his child, or not even custody, you know, fighting just to be able to get access to see his child, to be a part of his child's life, and the way this country is set up, just based on the woman, you know, when it comes to children, it's based, it's all in favour of the woman, you know, the woman would have to be a suicidal crack addict that kills the, that beats the youth on a regular basis before the man has a chance to have a look into the situation, yeah? Now, even the fact of having to go to court and stuff like that, and a man that don't know you decides whether or not you can have access based on certain things. This is the aspect that we was coming from, yeah? And also dealing with the fact of, you know, and we have to take, like, I like to take things from personal experience or from experiences that I have heard, that like stories I've heard from friends, things that I've actually witnessed firsthand, you know, not, not stuff that, um, I've read in the papers or or have a little, you know, one-sided story or one-sided knowledge of. Now, even to the point that even in my own life, you know, I have had to deal with the madness of the mother not let, wanting me to see my children, you know. Um, I did a go through court. I used psychology and um, stuff like that to, you know, make my situation change. And at the end of the day, my son became so unruly that she could not control him. And at the end of the day, access granted. <laughs> I mean, but realistically, I would have preferred it to be at the point that he never became unruly, that he never got himself into trouble, that he nearly he didn't nearly get himself expelled from school for me to get gain, you know, full access to the point that now um, from being a one week on one week off situation it's going to at the moment be a case of let me, I have him more time, I mean and I can understand how women get vexed and stuff like that because if you look after children it's very tiring, you, it's, it's a sacrifice, you know, you don't really get time to mess around and do, you know, you have to be a responsible parent, otherwise your kids are going to be whatless at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And so, I can, I can, I can sympathise with women how they carry on um, in just getting mad, but really and truly, that getting mad thing doesn't help out no situation. So I'd like to, number one, bring the argument and bring the case back to um, fathers that actually do want to play a responsive role. That's why you've got mad people dressing up like Batman and going up on Buckingham Palace and it's not just in the black community. I mean, a lot of people are dropping it like saying it's a black problem. It's not, it's, it's a social problem. But at the end of the day, right now, it's like we've got to look after ourselves, you know, because it's really highlighted against us as black people to the point that we are believing and actually um, going along with the hype, you know what I mean? So the argument is all about positivity and moving things along, so that's, what it's, that's, that's what's going on. Now the number is 07908568581 and I'd like to bring in poorly from exposure and parent um, alienation.com. Mm. Hi. Um. <clears throat> Now, the parentalalienation.com has to do with the syndrome, parental alienation syndrome and parental alienation. Now, what I've done is formed it as black men and fatherhood. So, from now when you see me, it's the black men and fatherhood founder. That's how I'm, I'm dealing with it now. Because I ain't dealing with it from the white side, the Asian side, you know, the Puerto Rican side. I'm looking at it as the black men and the fatherhood. Yes. So, that's who I am. I'm a black man. Okay. 
I'm a bit cheesed off today because I've been hearing more news that go around, yeah? And most people will get to their cases where it's supposed to come to an end and some people say the storm, you know, there's a storm, you go through the storm and it's calm on the other side. For one year, seven months, this is no storm which is ending, yeah? Now, what's, what's supposed to be going on is, is, for example, let's say, say you don't see your child for four months, yeah, for example, say, yeah? Then you get told that you beat up your child. Then you get told that you beat up the girl, for example, say, just throwing these examples. I'm saying that this happened to me, it may have, yeah, it may have not. But I'm wording, I'm wording this in a way that it's a third person, so if they want to say that I said anything to anybody, you know, because her solicitors are probably listening and so is she, yeah, but they want to bring me up as contempt of court, but I don't really care, yeah, so here it goes. Say, for example, these things happen to you, yeah. Say for example you had to look after yourself in court, you couldn't afford to get yourself a solicitor because they were going to charge you £22,000 for two days. Say for example they wanted to charge you two grand for one day, not even a day, just to sign a few forms. Yeah. Say for example all these things that happened. Say for example you had to go and um, save yourself or you're going to end up fighting people for no reason and have to find yourself constantly in church praying and whatever you have to do to stop it. Say for example, all these things happen to you. And then when you thought everything was about to come to a calm, what happens is that you receive a letter, say for example, <laughs> you know, I'm going to keep saying it because just in case they're listening, yeah, stating that they only want you to see your child for two hours a week. And when they raise it, when they decide to raise it, they want to raise it to four hours yeah after four months yeah and then after the six month yeah they want to raise it to six hours but then you see your son er, or daughter every other fortnight now that's is that telling that you that you need to see your is that what's happening here it's because this exactly yeah. right? it, it, it's, it's kind of bad now I'm I'm recording this here as well so basically you know, people, you know, if your children are out there and they're going to want some documentary of this, it will be recorded, it will be put down on the website so they can see in years to come that this is what men have to be fighting for because this is rubbish, yeah? Imagine you have to go for all of that and the woman, yeah, does not go for her head and think. If a father does not see his child often enough, yeah, how does that child know that that's the father? Yeah, it could be the milkman because he's actually seen the milkman more times than he's seen you. Yeah, and I'm told there's a bond, but the thing is, there is a there is a natural bond, but it's hurtful. Don't they know that it's hurtful? Yeah, and maybe they do know it's hurtful. So what are they doing it because it's hurtful? Now, what is the child learning from this? The child is not learning nothing from this. You're not actually spending no time trying to raise your son. You can't. By the time you look at him, you're like, oh, you want to do as much things as possible. Mm -hmm. There's not much time to be saying, son, A, B, C. All you're doing is going, go, 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 please laugh for me. Yeah? And you're worried because if he cries or she cries, that's all you're getting for that time. And then you've got to wait another two weeks. What about if your child's sick? Yeah? And, and you, all you have to do is sit down and, and watch your child being sick and, and pampering your child while they're not well for those six hours. And then have to wait another fortnight before you see your child again. Yeah? Some women are just not thinking, any guys, if you've been going through this rubbish yet, yeah, you need to go on the phone and you need to call into the studio and let us know, you know, talk. You need to start opening your mouth and talking. Because if you don't start talking, we don't know what's happening to you. Yeah? A lot of rubbish is happening to guys, but they're not saying anything. So all you're hearing is a woman's story of, you know what, she's been hurt. So what we know. Yeah, we know this story. It's going on. But we need to hear the men who've been going through rubbish. Sometimes the women lie and switch the story so it just pleases other people. Yeah? Now let's hear the men speaking for once. Don't carry on like you're a bad man down the street, driving your car speeding because you're angry, and then tell yourself that you're a man. You're not a man, you're a little boy because all you're doing is speeding and causing problems. Get on the phone and start talking. Fight for your child. Yeah? If you don't fight for your child, what are you going to say to your child? Oh, I'm a man. You can't even tell your son you're a man. Sorry. And when the man says fight for your child, yeah, they don't mean go and box up your baby mother. Yeah? <laughs> that does not mean box up your baby mother. That is just giving the ammunition 
to just lock you up or make sure that you don't get to see the charm. Yeah? It's time to start using your brains and not your fists and being physical. And as the brother said now, yeah? But for me now, when I was going through my baby mother, baby father syndrome, that's what I call it now, yeah? Baby mother, baby father syndrome. Because this baby mother, baby father situation is not a good situation. It is not how things are supposed to be. It's because more time you're lustful. I mean, you see a fit girl and you just want to ride that. I mean, yeah? Now what happens, yeah, is the man sees the woman, his penis gets erect. He wants to be close to the woman. Yes, his penis gets and even harder. Like, then he um, ejaculates and the spermatozoa fertilizes the egg. The egg then splits into two, etc., etc. A baby is formed. This is what happens when you shag, grind, drunk. Even that, you get disease, or you just have a good time and you're lucky. Yeah. So if you go around unstrapped, I mean unprotected, a woman lies to you and say they're on the pill, which is a situation I kind of know about. <laughs> but still, even so, I have to put my hands up. It was my sperm. I have it. So. Be very careful. But once you've got yourself into that situation, admit to yourself that you've done that and do the right thing. Do the right thing does not mean go and get married to the woman and whatever. It doesn't mean just pay out dough to the youths and pay out dough to the man because that's not bringing up your youth. The youths actually don't need dough per se. Yeah? Mm. And if you're just paying dough and what how women like to drop it, I mean, it's sort of like hoeing to a certain extent because you're paying for some oats that you've got from however long back, but it's some expensive oats. <laughs> and, I mean, some very, very bigger than Quaker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? So now you got your you, you're your child. Are you going to leave your child like a wild cub? I mean like a wild animal to to, to fend for itself and not get no guidance. So your child will then go and make the same mistakes that you have now learned from but your child does not know or understand and is not really ready for the future problems that he or she is going to be facing. Whereas you as a parent, you know these things and you must certain times realise that if the woman doesn't allow you to see your child, that she is not really going to be bringing up the child to the best way possible. There needs to be a balance and children are not stupid, they can sort of like work out and see what works and what doesn't. So if you're doing a thing and it's foolishness, your child will work out that it's foolishness. And if the mum's doing something that's foolish, the child will work out. But if it's got a balance of the two, the child will be able to differentiate, ah, I will do this thing like my dad and that thing like my mum. Because that worked there and that worked there. Yeah? So, it is very important that both parents, as far as I'm concerned, are around. And parents... You do not need to talk to each other too tough if you can't get along. What you need to discuss is things about the child and what's best for the child and anything else is really and truly none of your business. Yeah, thanks lawyer. Came on, came on just to help calm me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what I'm saying is guys, some, what I'm noticing is that some guys out there, they, you know, they go driving, they take out a gun, they walk out with gun, they walk out with knife, they carry on like the biggest bad man of them all. And they got children, and they don't want to see their children. Yeah? And this is sometimes it's because they just think there is a bad man, and sometimes they just had headache from the woman that they start to switch. And they think the switching is good for them when they turn bad. Yeah? When it's not good for them. Because you need to be a role model to your children. The only time you can show your ch your child that you is a man, yeah, a man, is when you fight for your child and you can see your child and you raise your child. Because all the hurt and pain, you will know, you will know it was worth it because your child wants you. Your child actually needs you, yeah. When people think that the people are like, oh, you're gonna have a child and dust off, oh, the child don't need me, he's got his mother. It's a load of rubbish, yeah. Your child needs you, no matter how big or, or small. Child don't want no money. Yeah, it's when it have money from you, it's like, oh, daddy, give me five p. You know what? Five p. They get excited over five p. They get excited over two p. It's not money they want. They want is your attention. 
Yeah, you love your attention. They want you to play with them. They want you to play with them rough. And, and when they fall over, you know, you, you help them to get up. You don't pick them up. You help them to get up so they can get up every time they fall over when they get older. You teach them something different. Like, for example, uh, a woman that I'm seeing now, yeah, her daughter was on the bus. She got picked on by a boy yesterday, yeah. And what happened on the bus is that the boy was going, you baby, 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 baby. And the girl start crying. Then the mum said to her, Oh, Nijan, you know, when she does, when he does that, you know, just, just walk past him and go. I said, no. I said, you come in. I said, when he tells you, baby, 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 look at him and say, shut your mouth. And she went, hmm? I said, tell him, shut your mouth. I said, now say it to me. I said, baby, 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 baby. And she went, shut your mouth. And I said, yeah. Tell him, shut your mouth. Today, when she got off the bus, she come running. Mommy, mommy, guess what? I made that boy cry. <laughs> yeah. I just made the boy cry. Well, he said, baby, baby, baby. And I went, shut your mouth. And I went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... But the thing is, that's what men are supposed to do. Women would only bring up a boy to, to be a pansy. Yeah? If you see a boy on the street and he's like, <laughs> it's because he was raised by his mother. Yeah? That's all it was. The other thing is, certain times, from experience, you've got to be bitchy. Like, bitch is like, Amen. you know what I mean? <laughs> not, not even like proper, like, we don't shut your mouth, but go and do vindictive, just like horrible things, like, like, from girls how, things. How, girls. Like, like how a girl would react. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, certain time a man is necessary in the equation. Now, certain time a woman, you know, if the boy now box the, bo box the girl for telling them to shut your mouth, then that's the way the woman come in and go, ah, oh, and, and make the man and make the child feel good again. And then, yeah, yeah. but the man would then think, okay, that didn't work. Now I'm trying this one. <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna teach my child kung fu. <laughs> you know, so that's what happens. Hold on, yeah, yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna say so. <laughs> no, remind, remind the people who you are. Huh? Tell the people who you are. Who you oh yeah, yes, braids, yes, braids. But um, I remember earlier on I said to um. Hakeem. DJ Hakeem, um, you know, one of my inspirations in life is my father, my late father, may he rest in peace, yeah, and um, I think, personally, that's, that's, that's just it right there, man, every child needs a father figure and a mother figure, we both need, mm -hmm. we, we all need, like, you know, the, the two sides, like Loy also said as well, we need, we need both parents there to know, alright, listen, I'm going to do this like my father, and I'm going to do this like my mother. My mother is also an inspiration to my life here, yeah, but my father mainly because um, I, I'm going to be a father, I'm, I'm going to be a father soon, you know what I mean, and the day I found out, yeah, I, was, I wasn't reacting in the most pleasant way. You know, I know the baby mother's listening, so I'm gonna be on point. <laughs> I'm gonna be on point with this one, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't nah, I wasn't I wasn't I didn't react in the way um a happy person should react. You see what I'm saying? And I admit that. But as time has gone by, you know what I mean, I, I've I've remembered every single thing my dad told me. <laughs> Everything. Every day of my life I've remembered, you know, even when I get up and I feel a certain way and I scratch my head a certain way and, and I wash my face a certain way I just think of my dad instantly because I see him doing the same thing when I was younger you see what I'm saying and whenever myself and the baby mother have an argument I see my mum and dad <laughs> it's, 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 it's a cycle man it's a circle and we, we need those people there and like I said earlier on again you know I, I did bad things in my life here but I knew when to stop because I had my father there to tell me, look son, it is wrong. Do things, patience removes mountains. That's, that's, the, that's what he always used to say to me, patience removes mountains. Hmm. And if people don't understand what that means, <laughs> why you, need, you definitely need some loving in your life, man. You know what I mean? You need someone to guide you seriously because uh -huh. that, that saying alone yeah, makes you understand in life, not everything happens just like that. You see what I'm saying? You get yourself caught up in situations you wish you weren't in. But face it, be a man or be a woman and just face the situation, take upon your responsibilities the best way you know how. You know what I mean? I haven't been the most responsible person, you know what I mean? I could admit that. I haven't been the most responsible person with my situation, but I am trying my best. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I really am trying my best. Most high knows it. I know it deep within my heart, you see what I'm saying? And that's thanks to 
the father figure. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, on that tip there, I have to I have to kind of agree. Um, you know, being a first time parent, I mean, it's not something you. It's, there's no blueprint for it. You know, there's there's. Boy, it's a new. I remember when. <laughs> Like you, like um, in my situation, it was like a, a little, little two week fling. Know what I mean? And then, yeah, later, man. And then, like, there was the bungee effect. Dang, I'm pregnant. Damn, my life flashed before my eyes. Now, for me, in my situation, my dad left the, the household and stuff when I was 10. And really, truly, um, the guidance he gave me was basically like playing fight and I'm playing fight with my dad so when I was in primary school I was a heavy fighter kind of tinker the thumps that the other kids give you ain't nothing compared to the, <laughs> to the, the dad you do when you're playing and stuff like that you know what I mean but then like, as he left and, and, and whatever and he wasn't really around and then I found myself in that situation what passed for me is like stuff that my older brothers told me because my older brothers like was seven years older than me and stuff and they was giving me guidance and things like that but they're my brothers so I'm following the rubbish that they're doing I mean because they, they are my idols I mean so, my, no I mean, so they haven't got experience in life and a lot of the situations that go on with the kids nowadays is because their parents don't have situ um, experience in life but basically what I'm saying is that initial experience of rah I'm going to be a parent what are you supposed to do? Like, what, you know, it's like, okay, I mean, right, <laughs> what, I mean, there's no blueprint, there's no one to, and, and um, so if you don't have your parents around and having seen, like, what your parents have gone through and whatever, I mean, I'm quite lucky, I'm in the middle of quite a large family, so I've seen um, kids brought up from babies and yeah. stuff like that, and I've seen how my mum brought us up, and I've acknowledged how, how things were different from my older brothers, from and different like individuals in the family household. And um, my biggest thing, I've seen what discipline and non-discipline can do for children, not even in my house, but external to the household as well. And um, noticing how... Some, it's like um, being a young kid, this reminds me of Eddie Murphy, like when they used to go to a white kid's house, yes. you know, if, and I say hello to their mum, and the mum would blank me, mm. and I'd be like, rah, the mum must not like me. But then other kids would come to the house and blank the mum, you know, and the house would be, and it's like, then these kids would come to my house and try to blank my mum. <laughs> <laughs> rah, war zone. I mean, so it's like, it's a thing of respect and stuff, and then even to see these kids swear at their mum and cuss their mum and stuff like that and it's just like wow so you can actually see the difference that you know your upbringing has so um you know and nowadays women are becoming very westernized I, I suppose a lot of people are becoming westernized and you know offer this discipline off of you know maybe some people think that smacking children is abusive and if you do it in the wrong context it is if you smack your children out of anger like today I had to give my kids some licks because he nearly got himself expelled from his new school gone to a new school we only been there for two weeks like new secondary school 11 years old he let off a stink bomb yeah I done that right <laughs> and, and at the end of the day I mean I, I can relate I mean I can relate to what was going on there but even so, I wasn't angry, but the man nearly got, you know, he's, he's just trying to follow fashion, trying to be cool and things like that. So I had to show him, listen, star, you have to have respect in yourself. You can't let people come and try and show you, you know what I mean, to tell you to do something, and then you go and follow it, because you are responsible for the consequences of your own actions. Now, tell me what you think is going to happen from the actions that you have just done today. You know what I mean? And he actually thought, I said, so what was you thinking before? He said, I wasn't thinking. I goes, exactly. Now, in life, when you go through life, yeah, you are, what you do has consequences. Now, say you went to school and you've done really well. And, uh, and what do you think would happen? And he said, like, you know, I would get praised and I, he would get good things and it, his life would be happy. I said, right. Now, what do you think is going to happen now? He said, well, I'm probably going to get licks and I'm going to, I have to, I'm going to have to stay like behind at school. Like um, I've got, I'm, he's in bare trouble at school because apparently it's an automatically exposed, expelling an um, offence. But because his name hasn't been brought up before, he, he got a blight. But I'm like, he's only been at school for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, so you got brought up within two weeks okay, now, yeah? So I said to him as well, now you can't do nothing else. 
And also, as well as this now, I am actually going to come up to the school and speak to your teachers and say to them, if anything, you do anything to phone me. So you, you just put yourself in madness. Now I mean, for months, for that one stupid action, you put yourself in madness for months. And you're going to get licks when you get in as well. Now, I wasn't even angry, but I have to make sure that he knows that, you know, there's consequences for his actions. Therefore, I'm not expecting here, not and again, until he's in about year, what, year eight or something like that. <laughs> so, basically, this is, this is the situation. His mum now just said to me, she's not going to say a word to him, because if she does, she's going to get vexed, and she's not going to dis slap him, she's going to box him up like he's a man. So, it was best that I dealt with it. So this is, this is the sort of thing that goes on. It's like both parents are, you know, essential, you know what I mean? Because he's now becoming a man and he needs to be trained in manhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, please, this is Mr. Wonder, we and Shaggy says please, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, basically the same, is about the same topic as periods of alienation. You understand? Like so the boy, the woman, and we really don't, um, we don't allow men to see their children. What um, Paul is dealing with an excellent organization that he's setting up there, even the event that you have on the 27th of October, um, Black Men and Fatherhood at um, Lambert Town Hall Assembly Hall. Trust me, that I, I respect what you're doing, and boy, keep on, keep on keeping up the good work still. See, uh, one thing I have to say, bring it back to the whole thing, is the way I check it is right now in the black community, we are struggling to get respect, but there's another level we need to get to, really, when you honor. Really and truly, when you see all women, when you see a woman treat men when they have children for them and don't make them see them, really and truly for us to correct that situation, we have to understand the concept of honor. And honor basically is somebody who accepts their responsibility and carry out their duty. That is what the key to honor is. Now, when you treat a man like that and it is brought to your attention that you're treating them, okay, you do an emotional thing. It's an um, emotional action you're taking. If somebody points out to you that your actions are emotional, then you are responsibility now for say right. I must take responsibility for the actions what I do. And now your duty is to turn to that man as bad as whatever the thing is between you and turn to that man and apologize for whatever mistake you have made or whatever treatment you have given that man. Then now that bring honor to you. Not only respect, you know, that bring honor. Because you now correct what you have done. You understand? Because you have accepted responsibility for it. That's why we have come straight back even to the move the, the event that we have tomorrow. Because that's what this is about, is the, 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 the spirit of atonement and responsibility. You understand? That basically you atone for what you have done wrong. That's what even the, 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 the spirit of the Million Moors movement is about. It's for us as people, not just the same thing with the women, women and men. You understand? That's why it's not the Million Man March 10 years ago, it's the Million Moor movement, women and men. You understand? That everything starts with the family. So first and foremost, you have to start now take responsibility for what actions you take. And you must atone for what you have done wrong. And then now you get on and is when you take an action to correct what you have done wrong. And part of correction, the first step to correct now, uh, um, uh, when you have wronged somebody, is first and foremostly making an apology. That now is your duty. So when you carry out the duty, is the action now, and now you get honor. And that's what this whole thing is about. If you turn black people, not just to respect now, for us to move forward and get to the standard of honor. And that's what even the nucleus of the Million More movement is about. And even the event tomorrow, moving millions um, the, tomorrow over there in Bricks and Trees of Five Inns on the road. That's what it's about for us. And when you have honor in your life, you have direction. You understand? You know what, you, you have a clear picture of what is right and what is wrong. And you learn from your mistakes and you don't ever you have to apologize to somebody like that, humble yourself in front of somebody. So that now gives you now the, the, um, the direction in your life and that also gives you a, a, um, a clear picture. It also gives you, make you learn a, 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 a lesson, a valid lesson in your life. You don't repeat them. Say those who fail to learn the lesson of history is doomed to repeat, repeat it. That's how history repeats itself. Because if you don't learn from the mistake where you make, you're going to make it again. That's why God make you make it over and over and over. And suffer the pain and embarrassment of making that mistake until you learn and change. You understand? So that's what this is about. It's about now us learning from our mistakes, us accepting responsibility for the things that we do. That's what the whole, that's what the, the spirit of the march is. The, that's what the 16th of October is actually called the day of atonement and responsibility. That's what the 16th of, that's what culminates in the 16th of October. Is so between the 14th and 16th of October is called, the signature is called the Day of Atonement. 
And that's what we need. We say we talk about your yeah, woman them are doing woman are doing Ray Ray, but trust me, but we start think bigger now. Because it's a 21st century. We chat that from back in the 60s. We chat that from back down when Malcolm X. We chat that for so long now. If we start thinking bigger, so hold on, you know, respect you, one another, unify. Hold on, we talk about honor. You understand? Talk about honor now. And that's what I said, the woman, you know, what am I do? Because they don't know honor. You understand? They don't, because they don't know to accept responsibility for what they have done. You understand? Because they, they have not been given them kind of, that kind of understanding. And they are not able to rise above their emotion. Yeah, that's because right now, are you left, a woman get left with a child, then feel away. You understand? A man gone and then feel away, and the only way them can hurt them, and especially if the man don't want them, tell them straight to them face. But I can tell the point black being that I was in that situation. You understand? I can't get a similar you tell you straight. Right now, <laughs> what we call my thing is like hostage negotiation. Uh, that's so what we call it. Because I mean, I pay a certain money. You me not see. Yeah, 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 that's that. So, me, me never call that. So, you can say, um, Paul, the respect still coming. You know, still there, of course. You can't ever say, boy, um, if you was in that situation and <laughs> hypothetically <laughs> speaking, and. <laughs> it's not me, me. <laughs> you tell me straight. I'm me, say so. Me, say. I'm <laughs> me. Did have to go. Um, contact center to see my son for an hour a week. You understand? Oh, I used to have to, to have to travel two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back to my yard. That is five hours to spend one hour with my son. The woman no feel no way about that. When him comes, sometimes she makes sure she feel him just before. So when him come for the hour, he must sleep. You yes. understand? All them can. Now trust me. I will go to two hours. She make sure she come late. So I'm going one hour again because the place is locked. You know, the maximum time it can be open for is two hours. So basically, the place is locked now, so we only get one hour more time. So she drop it, you understand? And she wants her money up front, same way, you know? You understand? So trust me, we go court, the whole nine, you understand? Tell heap a lie, but we can't look after the youth. So yeah, it's a personal experience still, but point black, that means I'm not bitter towards women, because first of all, the first teacher of a, of a child, the first teacher of a child is a woman, the first nurse of a child is a woman. So respect due to the woman and said speech, you know? I, I don't even want to stop you there, blah, blah. I just yeah. want to say, say it was pay per view. It's really like pay per view. Straight, trust me. Straight, trust me. You can't press all the red buttons to get interactive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> trust me, man. All the red buttons you can't press. She press on one of my buttons. We <laughs> don't watch nothing, Steve. <laughs> yeah, so, like, on that tip there, it's like, the women, them now, yeah? It's like they turn, turn commando, they turn like Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. you know what I mean? Car, you know, you, but at the same time, it's, it's like the British and, and the, um, you know, the, um, the um, what's it, Taliban and things like that. You send them the weapon, it's you that give them the weapon, you know what I mean? You give them the weapon and then they use the weapon and give them. It's you that give them the rising, it's you that chain them up. You know what I mean? So, so. Boy, go on, go on. <laughs> Alright, let me tell you, right? Now, one thing I've make clear. Can you ever say that about what a woman does to me? If you ever say, yeah, yeah, but you don't keep woman with her, I don't. I need a box out of the night time, a police have a call for me that's like, cross out of yard. But let me tell you straight, right? Let me tell you straight. Let me tell you straight, right? Me never lay my hand one time upon that woman. You understand? Me never keep no woman with her. My phone never ring and me can't take the car. You understand? She never got through my phone and said, Woman, I phone me and ask me who this is. I ask me a question. I never come in the late time of night and I smell all kind of thing come on from a rave. Never one day. I tell you, say, I knew more about her pregnancy than she because every single book for read about each stage of development of my child in that womb, me read it and me read it to her. Me tell her what the child can do at each stage of development. You understand? Me know about the three, the three stages of childbirth. You understand? Me know about EPs. You have to me can't say, Well, me done talking. You know? Even people who are um, midwife, midwife here, me talk and say, boy, it's not like you can deliver a child. But make sure I say, me know so much more pregnancy if she ball in the middle of the night and can't go to hospital, me can deliver my youth. You understand? Yeah. Trust me. So what me tell you, say, me can beat my chest in any square. I said, me a father. 
she not spend a penny. Me say you sit down every day. She come in from work. You sit down. Me go in the kitchen. Me cook food. You understand? Run her back. Massage foot. Put her to bed. Trust me. Some me do it for nine months. Me not beg no friend for this. You understand? So me say she know who I am as a father. Everything we provide for, 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 for my youth. Me say you sit down. You not spend a penny. Every cut. Wardrobe, everything, clothes, everything, provide that one time put up. You know, you know, beg not trust me, you don't spend a penny. You understand? So, when me say, I saw she treat me, I know I don't deserve that kind of treatment. She know I don't deserve that kind of treatment. You understand? So, when me say, me have to travel two and a half hours and to, at the middle, me I tell you about me, get the beginning now. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So, you realize, you realize, so when you boy. When I say when I say there's no justification, I'm stand up in a court. And you see when when you use a words we come from Jamaica, so let me tell you now straight. When you sit down now, do my now make it to the bit right. So you go you go a lie. So you have to convince the liar. So you're not thief, you're not murderer, you're not crap dealer, you know, you're not beater, police will call for you. So you convince the liar now. So then they're on your side. Right. So you go um mediation. You still in a mediation now. You have to convince the, the mediator, you're not a crap dealer, you're not a drug dealer, you're not a you're not thief, you're not a murderer, you never call the police for you, you never box her down the night, you never kick the woman with her. So now that the mediator is convinced, that now work. Boom. So now you're going to court. You have to convince the judge now, so you're not a murderer, you're not a All this time, you know, she only have to turn up, you know, and, and just be there. And as far as them concerned, she all right. You have to prove that you are a responsible parent. Then you see she all like, like my brother one time said, he said as long as she now put the baby in the oven and put the cake in the pram, she can <laughs> kick the pig. <laughs> as long as she know how to do that, as long as she know how to do that, she can kick the picnic, you understand a fear and she can kick the pig. But you, 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 you have to prove that you know I use the picnic a road cell crack. Yeah, yeah that's right. You have to prove it. Yeah, that's worse than you say, come from Jamaica, Lord of God. The boy, he must say, I told him in a shot. <laughs> you understand? So don't trust me. So when me talk and say, how do woman treat me? You understand? Me can't hold up my hand point blank and say, you understand? I can hold up my hand point blank and say, I do not deserve that treatment. I'm not saying that because it's just my, my perspective alone. You know, my mother come from Jamaica, he never talk man. My mother come from Jamaica, he never talk to see my son. All right. Yeah, it's uh, like, uh, it's like, 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 And we're talking a very emotional subject right now. Now, in all of this now, yeah, why? I can't say I never beat my girl or nothing like that, yeah? <laughs> But the reason why I can't say that is because it was in self-defense, right? I was leaving the yard, yeah? Me and her got to a point now, yeah? That we were just so vexed with it, that mean? We, we did, just didn't like to hear each other's voices. But we got you together. Now this is crazy, yeah? You gotta think about this, people. When, listen, people, no matter how old you are, before you start putting, you know, pulling down your drawers and things like that now, yeah? Think about this. A child is your flesh and blood. Just imagine how much you love yourself. Now, me, I love my children more than I love myself. Yeah? So, if, right? I right, even let me give you another, on that tip there, right? Say you have a car. Yeah? Now you don't love your car more than you love yourself. You might love your car. You don't love it more than you love yourself. Now, if your girl can't drive or if your girl is dumb and just have no respect, would you give your girl your car? No, she wouldn't be my girl. No, <clears throat> you wouldn't. Yeah? So now, you're going to give somebody or make somebody own something and own it and own it as much as you do that you love more than yourself mm. it's a very serious and volatile situation yeah so when you when you're there and you just like ride that girl's feet you know or even she's not all that she don't even know that but she's got a hole <laughs> you know what i mean oh. yeah be very careful very careful because you could end up in a situation where this person now has something of yours 
that you read that means more to you than yourself and you don't like each other so be very I mean obviously think of the implications from that that's why man and man is like when they start talking about it they start getting flashbacks and start getting more and more emotional now me and my baby mother it wasn't like we got so vexed well it was at that there was so much tension I actually brought my child back to give to her in her house and I don't even know what she was complaining about. I can't even remember what the complaint but it was just complaining about how late it was or that he didn't have something to eat just it's like I'm bringing him to your house you know I'm coming yeah but what you ain't got food in your I mean he had I mean he he ate but you wanted me to bring him so I bought him otherwise he would have eaten again before I bought him but you're like bring him now bring him now bring him now when I bring him now he hasn't eaten but you know this so why are you freaking out so I'm just like you know what louder argument I'm walking out the house two twos I'm going down the stairs and Hoover come over the top of the stairs to try and lick me up my head you know what I mean so from there like, I run back up the stairs say yo what are you dealing with you know what I mean I shouldn't have done this but I went to give it a little slap and boy, it, you seen that Tasmanian devil, that cut Whoa! It was off me. It was self-defense. Baseball bat start get pulled out. All kind of madness start. So it was self-defense, but I had to defend myself. So I didn't actually go and beat up the... I defended myself until it was safe for me to leave the yard. That's what <laughs> happened. I mean, I didn't box no one with no fist. I didn't lift up no one with no kick. It was pure restraint and slaps. I mean, I made a little bite in here and there, but, but don't put your hand in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. so, so it was a bit nasty, and then after that, I, I didn't see my youth for a while. You know what I mean, it's kind of understandable still. You know what I mean, I don't hold it against nobody, but this is what I'm saying: madness can kick off, yeah, because you now have to share the most precious thing to both of you and you don't like each other now as a man you can let go of your emotions and say look all i need to do is take my youth from you and be away from you yeah and then bring my back you back to you and be away from you yeah anything we need to discuss make it be a discussion about the child yeah i don't want to hear nothing else I'm not interested in nothing except if it affects my child mm -hmm. yeah so if anything else gets into it and you're not ready now we get along fine there's just so much respect and you might as well you can almost say love there's love and respect now because you know the the acknowledgement of my my position as a father is there because i bring up my youth because now the difference is clearly visible as to even how my son speaks to me and uh, in comparison to how he speaks to her and I've actually broken down the reasons why and it is um, consistency, a simple thing of consistency but we're not going to go into that I want to give the microphone back to Paulie so he can um, address certain things and um, wh where are we going? are we, are we going to be talking about you know, custody and things? let's kind of try and because it's so emotive you can, you can go all over the place with this but let, let's, let's just decide and if you want to interject at any time the number is 07 908-568-581 if you want to interject, if you want to talk about things, if you want some information because the brother is going through some madness and has actually um, de defended himself in court and has got a lot of knowledge and wisdom to um, pass on well, yeah you say it's, it's very wide this topic yeah and I'm going to start with um, what brother said he said about you need to honor, yeah, and humble yourself. Yeah, that was a good word he used, humble yourself. Because this is something I can talk about because this was before it even came into court. Yeah, I went to her mother's house with my mother. I'm like 28 years old. Not you, somebody else that you've heard of. Ah, no, 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 I can talk about this one. Right. I can talk about this one because <laughs> this is not court. Yeah, this, this is not the court proceedings. Yeah, okay. now. When we, was in, when we was at the mother's house with my mother, yeah, I couldn't believe that I had to walk with my mother. I was thinking, hold on a second, I'm 28 years old. Why would I need to walk with my mother to her mother? And you know what, my brain was going, 
He's defending yourself. Just in case they want to raise their hand at you, your mother's in the place. Yeah? And my mother, I know my mother, she's mad. Yeah? Man, my mom would, you know, she'll say, no, the Lord not think me mad. But my mom is mad. When, my, when you, when you do something wrong to my mom, she will pick up anything that she sees and dash it on your head. Yeah, not your foot, not your chest, not your arm, but your head. Yeah, when I remember when I was young and she licked me in my, in my head with a pot because I was rude. Yeah, I remember when I told my mom to shut up because I heard a white boy do it. My mom gave me a solid black eye. Yeah, it was solid. And I was going to school and say to people, yeah, I fell over. You know, I had to lie. So I can tell you my mom is nuts. Which, and it was, yes, my mom is mad. So you know what? She's, get, she's there to defend me and that was my, the back of my mind so she was with me now I went there because my sisters and all that told me to go to their parents house so I went to the parents house and look, I sat down and I was trying to say yeah I want to be there for my child when my child is born and blah 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 and and I you know the thing was for me was to apologize and just to apologize because I didn't know what was wrong yeah I from, from me I couldn't see that I had done anything wrong but if I apologize, they might let out the secret of why they don't like me, yeah? So what happened was I said, okay, I'm sorry and, you know, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong, which I wasn't sure what I had done wrong, but that allowed them to speak. And they sat there and they were looking and they were walking up and down like they were better than me, yeah? And they were going, yeah, well, you know... I don't like you, yeah, but I do like you. you. You haven't done nothing wrong to us. It's not like you beat up our daughter and do this and do that. And, you know, you, you, you did buy the place and you said that she can keep it. And you did buy the car and you did do this and you did, you know, so there's not really much I can say bad about you. Yeah. But, you know, you don't talk. You, you don't talk like a black man. I was like, huh? How do you talk like a black man? Yeah. You, the way that you come in the house and you, you don't mingle. Uh, what do you mean don't mingle? You know, like, you know, I'm trying to find out information here. You, you, you don't mingle with us. And I was like, right, you smoke, you drink, yeah. I don't smoke, I don't drink. You will go in the back garden, play dominoes and chat rubbish. I don't know what you're talking about when you're chatting rubbish, so I ain't going to be jumping in, yeah. I will play the dominoes with you, I will win. Yeah, but <laughs> because you guys are drunk, yeah, you, you're buzzed and you're drunk. I don't know what's going on. But you know what? From that, is that then a mum shout out like, you was like a white man. And I was like, what? Yeah. And he was like, you was a, you know what you is? You was a, you, you was a, you was a, a white man in a black suit. And I was thinking, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And then they went into the rest of it, you know, because you don't come out and drink and all that. You sit down in the, in the room and everything. And so, basically, because yeah. I, I spoke English, yeah, well, I went to an English school, yeah. Because I, I was born in Enfield, because I was born in St. Mary's Hospital, yeah, and moved in Enfield Lock. It's not my fault the way that I speak from down there, yeah. It's not my fault that I, I have a business phone. Yeah, and a, and a personal phone. So when I answer the phone, I say, "Hello, this is Mr. Scarrett. Can I help you?" Very professional, and I don't go, "Yeah, one, 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 one. Yeah, yeah, yeah," because I don't know who's on the other line. Yeah, Channel Four call me up, and I'm going, "Yeah, yeah, one, one." And I'm like, "Run back to the wrong number, man." You know, he ain't gonna do business with me. Yeah, I don't want black parents when they're phoning me to be scared of me. Yeah, when I'm answering the phone and they want to bring their children to my dance class, we start from the age of four years old. Yeah, so if I'm going, yeah, man, what going? Yeah, yeah, you won't bring your child down. Yeah, like, hold on a second. This guy doesn't. I, I don't know if I can trust this guy. You know, you got people calling, right? And they're gonna be looking to see. And I just couldn't get it. I humbled myself and went in there, and I found out that they didn't like me because I I done good stuff. Yeah, and then when I walked outside, my mom said, "Don't change yourself. Yeah, do not change yourself for them and fight for your son." Yeah, so I said, "You know what? That's what I'm going to do." But that's what I don't understand. You could even go and humble yourself. Yeah, you can humble yourself and apologize. But sometimes you can be humbling yourself. You don't even know what you're, you're apologizing for. Yeah, and you're apologizing to people who don't like you for who you are. Yeah, then you're not going nowhere. You could have a million pounds. They only like you because of the million pounds. When that million pounds is gone, they don't like you. When, they, when you're out of their 
picture, when you're not even around, when you're around a corner, they still hate you. They still hate you. Doesn't matter who you are, they still hate you. Guys, why are you phoning? in? You know this is happening to you. Some of you are just carrying on like, oh yeah, I'm all cheeky with the girls. No man, this can happen to you. And you know what? It probably has happened to you, but it's happened to your dad. Yeah? And you're just sitting in your car going, yeah, no, nah, I'm jiggy. No, you're not jiggy. You're a damn fool. Because you know what? You probably ain't even picked up the phone and called your dad to see how he is. Yeah? It's not his fault half the time. Half the time, we got really great dads out there. You know, I've met men on the street that you can talk to, yeah, and who has so much knowledge, they got no one to pass it on to. The child don't even pick up the phone and call them to see how they're doing. You know? The system was bad in the past. We talk about all the slavery days and all that rubbish. Man, that thing there is gone, it's done and it's dusted. Yeah? We need to talk about now, today. Yeah? There's no one with putting shackles on my feet. If I want to earn money, I earn my own money. Yeah? I've got my own knowledge. I tell you what, I can, I can paint. I can do carpentry. Yeah, I can do what the Romans and the, and the Pharaohs did. I can, I can work hard with my own thing. I don't need other people. I don't need the government's money. Yeah, so I'm not a slave to the society. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, what? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to need to do this on an interview basis now. Oh, boy. <laughs> people are getting a bit carried away and think that, yeah? Okay. Get angry, sorry, mate. <laughs> right. Let's try and like steer this away from like personal situations there, right? From now on, for a little while at least, we're not allowed to talk about personal situations, car. All it does is bring back flashbacks and that's stuff, you know what I mean? That's up the scheme of consciousness teams, you know what I mean? Like, because we could have Hakeem decide to get up all of a sudden, and he's got a bad story as well, you know what I mean? So we could be all like here just like cussing about our own personal situations. So basically now, what do we actually do about it? You know what I mean? What do we actually do about it? Now, your situation is different from mine. So, not everybody's situation is like the, the same, same thing. Mm. Yeah? The one thing that we can unify on, yeah, in this room, yeah, in this room, is that the woman does not want us to see the children. Now, me and my, my one broke up. Your one dashed you out. I don't know what that is about. I, I, I would like to get Wayne back in the building and find out <laughs> what, what happened to him. What happened to him? He was massaging the foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was running far. He was running far. I don't know what happened there, Starman. He was running far. He was running far. The only thing I can think of is man must not have been good in bed or something. <laughs> 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 but, because when you're doing everything else wrong, man, and you're there like that, and paying for everything as well, man, we need to find out what went wrong there. It's like, what, you can't even treat women good now? <laughs> 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 